In this lesson, we're going to be looking at an introduction to genetics, and we're going to be answering the question, why do siblings not look the same? As a review, remember chromosomes come as homologous pairs. So you get one copy of each chromosome from mom and one copy from dad. And now remember, when we look at these chromosomes, they both have the same gene, and our genes determine traits. And so because you get one from each parent, you have two copies of every gene. This is going to be really important when we start talking about how these are inherited and how they interact. So now let's look at what a trait is. And this is going to be a characteristic of an organism. Things like hair color, height, metabolism, all kinds of things. Um, any characteristic is a trait. And these traits are created by genes. So remember, genes are a section of, it, of DNA, and they code for specific proteins. So one of the things that you've got to get really, really familiar with is this right here. DNA codes for proteins, proteins create traits. That is, in a nutshell, all of genetics. Now, all genes are not the same. Uh, we have what are called alleles, which are different versions of a gene. So, for example, brown hair versus blonde hair. Both are versions of the gene hair color. So, another example would be eye color. Within the gene eye color, which everyone has, this gene, different people have different alleles or versions. For example, blue, brown, or green. Now, <clears throat> on your homologous chromosomes, remember you have the same genes on these chromosomes. So, for example, we're going to say hair color, eye color, and skin color are on this particular pair. However, you can have different alleles. In other words, the version of the gene that you're dad gave you is not necessarily the same as the one that your mom gave you. So in this case, let's say your mom gave you brown hair, but your dad gave you blonde hair. And so on. And so the ones that your mom gave you and the ones that your dad gave you are different. And how they interact is going to be how you end up looking, how your trait ends up being expressed. Now, all alleles are also not created equal. Some alleles we call dominant, meaning that you only need one. Because remember, you have two copies of every gene. And so, as if one of those alleles is dominant, that's what's going to show up. So I like to think of them kind of like winners or bullies. If they're there, they show up. On the other hand, we have some that are recessive. Meaning that unless we have two copies, uh, in other words, that the dominant is not present, they don't show up. They lose. When they go head-to-head -head with a dominant trait, a dominant allele, they lose. And of course, we're going to have to be able to show the difference of this when we write these genes. So we're going to write alleles as letters. A dominant is going to be given an uppercase letter. And a recessive is going to be given a lowercase letter. Now, it doesn't really matter which letters that you use. I recommend really just sticking with B. Um, but as long as you have the uppercase is dominant and the lowercase is recessive, you're good. Now, with that being said, don't use these letters. Um, for various reasons, most notably because it's extremely hard to tell the difference between the upper and lower case with these particular letters and when you start to get a little sloppy you lose track of which ones are big and which ones are little and it just becomes a mess so just don't do it stick with B so let's look at an example with our hair color gene so we're gonna say that there are two alleles we have brown which is dominant so that gets a big B and blonde, which is recessive, so it gets a little b. Now remember, if the dominant's there, it always shows up. 
and the recessive only shows up if the dominant is absent. So let's look at how they interact when they're actually inherited. So here we have our chromosomes, our homologous pair, and both parents have given you a brown allele. So we would say that you have a big B and a big B. The dominant's present, it's the only one present, so you're going to have brown hair. Now let's say your mom gave you brown, but your dad gave you blonde. So we would write this as big B, little b. The dominant is still present. And if there's one dominant present, it doesn't matter what the other one is. You're going to have brown hair. Because that blonde is recessive, it doesn't make a difference. Now, if both of your parents give you a blonde allele, now that's different. We would write this little b, little b. There's no dominant present, and now you're going to have blonde hair. This is going to be the only way that you can get a recessive trait if you have both little letters. Now let's look at how we write, we talk about these things um, in genotype and phenotype. So genotype is what alleles you have. So in other words, which letters do I have? Phenotype is going to be what physical traits you have. So I just think phenophysical. Um, with geno, it's like the type of genes. Uh, but in phenotype, it's what physical traits you have, and that would be like brown versus blonde hair. So let's look at this gene, the tongue roll gene. So we're going to say that the ability to roll your tongue is actually a dominant trait. So the alleles are going to be a big R for you can roll it, and a little r for you can't. Those are the only two possibilities. So here's my chromosomes. This would be my genotype. So which alleles I actually have on my chromosomes, that is the genotype. And then the phenotype is whether or not I can physically roll my tongue. So if I have this genotype, big R, big R, my phenotype is, yes, I can roll my tongue. That would be the dominant phenotype. If I have big R, little r as my genotype, again, yes, I can roll my tongue. And then if I have little r, little r, my phenotype would be no. I have the recessive phenotype in this case. I cannot roll my tongue. Now, we're not just going to call these things big R, little r, and so on. We actually have names for these. Um, and it's actually pretty simple. We're going to use the word homozygous when there are two of the same allele. Homo means same. So if I have two big letters or two little letters, meaning those are the same, that's going to be homozygous. Now you should be thinking right now, well, then you can't just say one thing. You can't just say homozygous if it could be big, big, and little, little. So we're going to say homozygous dominant when you have two big letters, and homozygous recessive when you have two little letters. If you have one of each, we're going to say you are heterozygous, because hetero means different. And that simply means you're big R, little r. We don't have to throw any other things in there because heterozygous means big R, little r. That's it. So let's look at how this interacts with phenotype. The homozygous dominant genotype, which is big R, big R, gives you the dominant phenotype, meaning you can roll your tongue. Heterozygous, big R, little r, also means you can roll your tongue. Notice that these are the same. Homozygous dominant and heterozygous both give you the same phenotype. Just by looking, you can't tell the difference. The only one you can tell different is homozygous recessive 
because it's going to have a different phenotype. So make sure you get that down. Because both homozygous dominant and heterozygous have a dominant allele, they have the dominant phenotype, and they look the same. So bringing this all together, our gene is tongue roll, our alleles are can roll, which is dominant, and we're going to use a big R, and can't roll, which is recessive, and uses a little r. The phenotypes, the actual physical trait, is that I can either physically roll or cannot physically roll my tongue. And the genotypes that are associated with it, homozygous dominant and heterozygous, both give me the dominant phenotype, and homozygous recessive gives me the recessive phenotype.